Hi, my name is Alina and I'm a character artist in video game industry. I have more than 10 years of experience in games and I have a broad range of expertise in several disciplines, from concept art to 3D environment art, art direction and of course 3D character art. Working in both AAA and mobile industry, I have contributed in titles such as Rainbow Six, For Honor and recently Ori and the Will of the Wisps. In this tutorial, I will take you through the process of designing and creating your character from the scratch. We will cover how to choose references, make initial research, sculpting ZBrush, rendering KeyShot, and how to do final presentation. I hope you will enjoy this tutorial and thanks for watching. Welcome to the third and final episode. In the first two episodes, I took this project from the concept art to this pretty fine stage of sculpting. And today we're gonna do a little bit of sculpting on a base. This little skull on the hip feet, I'm gonna add some details so it look like a full base. And we're gonna do final touch up on the sculpt itself on a poly paint and finally take it into Keyshot. And I want to start talking about base and why I think this element shouldn't be ignored. If I learned anything from being an environment artist in video games is that environment art is a king. There would be no universe of a game without environment art. And unfortunately, it makes me really sad that all hype goes to a character art and environment art goes pretty much unnoticed, especially on that station quite often. And anyway, the other thing that I learned is I can add a little piece of environment to every character I made. So it would add to my presentation and would tell the story about my character more clear probably and it would just make the whole presentation better. As I mentioned before, the only thing that we provide to our future viewers is a picture uh, and we can tell more about our character in that picture by adding a little bit of environment. Like for example, that guy is nature loving kind of person or oh, that guy is just got his breakfast and we just have this piece of a story happening right now stuff like this so i hope i convinced you about importance of the base for your character and let's get into the sculpting <laughs> I didn't have any concept art for my base. Uh, initial idea was to add some foliage and add some stones on the skull. But later I just did change it. I keep the foliage but I replace the stones with the roots and the stump so it look more like a forest environment or something like this. And yeah, I mean, that fits this character more. You can see me doing the same thing all over again. I do use curve tube and just placing it where I want it to be. Um, and you already saw I'm not a huge fan of automatization, or use of brushes, or use of nano mesh in this brush. But in that particular case, I create myself insert mesh brush for the leaves. 
I did it for multiply reason, because I want to speed up myself, obviously, and I also want those leaves to be very clean, to have very clean geometry, to have a very low res, a pretty shape and very clean geometry. Here it is, it's two very simple leaves and one bud. I didn't use bud all that much, but it's mostly for the leaves. Anyway, I'm gonna speed up my sculpting process for the base because we still have a lot of stuff to say about polypaint and finally about render. Now, uh, final polypaint. I don't do a lot of polypaint on her, except for the face and hands that really call for details, for the, uh, for the skin texture. The rest of the sculpt really don't need any complicated polypaint. It's already have a lot of details, it's already quite complicated, so adding too much details in uh, the poly painting will be actually a big mistake in terms of design. So my poly paint is mostly consist of very simple smooth gradient from one color to another. For example, on her shoulders, it's smooth gradient from the central part to outside part, and on her antennas, it's a smooth gradient from white to pinkish. 
and I use a little bit of uh, masking by cavity in a mask menu because here actually uh, it allows me to uh, mask inside the cavity or I can invert it so or I can only mask uh, protruding pieces like sharp edges for example which actually help sometimes it help to accent already sculpted details but no more than that uh, I have enough of detail here if not too much so this is pretty much it very simple poly painting You might notice that I did change her colors quite a lot compared to initial concept art. And then I've been preparing her to final render in Keyshot and I just felt like I don't like this red coat at all. It's grabbing too much attention to, it, to itself. It's too bright, it's breaking the silhouette, etc. So what I did, I placed my old variant on the left and I replaced this red with very uh, subtle pinky beige and I also did uh, change the poly paint for the wings. I make them darker on the back so it would help the lighter coat to pop up. I also did change her hair color a little bit because everything now it's muted dusty pinky. I did change her hair color a little bit towards dusty pinky color as well. Sometimes this is what happening when you doing your own design. Sometimes a great idea will be popping up 
very last moment, but I glad I did it and it worked really well. Even though I have really powerful hardware, I still need an optimization pass before sending my sculpture to KitShot. And for that I'm gonna go into ZBrush plugins, Decimation Master, and use and keep polypaint, this is very important, and then preprocess all. Run. And now just wait, uh, probably watch a couple of YouTube videos because it's taking quite some time. So it was ready in 5 minutes 21 seconds and next step is uh, to decimate it actually because for now it was just pre-processed. So ZBrush just analyzed the mesh and now you can decimate it. I will use 20%. Done. It's, it, this separation will go very fast. Now it's decimated. And now we can send it to Keyshot. Okay, we'll start with adjusting the light and the first thing I will do, I will switch to GPU mode. And another announcement to make is that due to very misfortunate circumstances, I lost my original edit for my light setup. So I have to redo it last moment in Keyshot 10. So the rest of this tutorial will be in Keyshot 9 and this patch I re-screened in Keyshot 10. Sorry for this inconsistency. Uh, you also will see me look a little bit lost in a new interface because it's basically the first time I open in Keyshot 10, but I will try to do my best. I'm gonna start with assigning HDRI map. I choose this one because it have warm evening light. And then I'm going to go uh, change my background to a solid color. I don't need this uh, photo on, on the back. And uh, another thing is I will tone down the brightness. I don't need this to be my main source of light. My light setup will be done using built-in Keyshot geometry. So edit a geometry and I will prefer to use disks. And I want this light to be really theatrical kind and very dramatic, so my first material will be Spotlight. I'm gonna place it very approximate for now, uh, because my secondary light will be a bit tricky, so I want to adjust them together. So my secondary light will be disc again and initially it's supposed to be something like reflector in uh, photography equipment but I changed my mind in the process and it become more like a stage light uh, shining from the bottom up. Here I felt like I have not enough of HDRI lighting, so I did push it a little bit higher. And then now I can adjust my lighting for those two lights. So I will replace uh, the basic material with light, and then I changed lumen to watt, so it become really, really harsh, but it's easy to see what this particular light is doing. Now, I only need this disc to emit light from one side, like a proper light equipment. Now, much better and more theatrical looking. Now, changing my camera setting for the graphic right now. And the third important light is uh, one on her back. So again, the disc. And this time I want some light that's gonna be shining through her wings. For that I'm gonna turn it into air light, will give it very warm bright shade and will change uh, my luminant watt again. So it's gonna be super bright and very warm. Something like that. Now, to make sure this light on the back doing its thingy, 
I have to do um, very fast uh, transparent material for the wings just for now to see if I got the right lighting settings. So I will add uh, this common skin translucent material into wings. We'll do very quick adjustment, nothing fancy. And you see how it works beautifully with uh, my newly installed light. Adding another light, it's gonna be rim light in blue. So again, the disc, and now I'm gonna place it in a position. I'm going back to my spotlight and changing the position slightly. Uh, now I feel like it's better. And another uh, disc and another light. This time it will be rim light again. But this time it's gonna be warm rim light from the other side. Okay, now it's looking like something. I will go around and tackle every light again and again. So here it's not the final quality of lighting. But for now I want to add last important light for this scene. And it's gonna be this uh, plasma ball or whatever, the fire. And I will do it using a real light again on a sphere and changing into that again making it really warm glow i think it looks beautiful right now i have to assign emissive material on this uh, light uh, geometry itself so it doesn't look too weird more adjustments I felt like this rim doesn't do uh, its thing bright enough so I tried to adjust that and now I wanted to add human skin on her hands once those materials will be replaced with the proper materials there will be another round of adjustment for the light but for now I just want to make sure my translucent material will be working with this lighting and I think it's working quite well. Okay, this is the last light I'm introducing to the scene. And it's a small area light that will be behind her head. Basically to enhance this uh, material, translucency material on her ears. Uh, sometimes it have to be that specific. In any case, I think I'm pretty much done here. Let's run a very, very test render uh, to see what we have. I will choose small resolution and I'll choose like five minutes. And thanks for magic of video editing, we can skip over this waiting time. Okay, that's not at all bad. Uh, especially because it steals the brush legacy materials and the next step gonna be fixing materials and fixing the lights according to our new materials. Last thing to fix is I feel like this sphere between her hands is a bit too bright so I turn it down. Uh, 
Okay, last thing that I wanna do is I want to show you my light setup in geometry view. So you will be able to see all my lights together and their positions. Here we go. There is a main spotlight on the top. There's two rim lights. Those are the biggest ones. One reflector light or something that's supposed to be reflector light. One light from the back to lead the shine through her wings and a small light. Yeah, and one light between her hands. And now on to material settings. So let's talk about materials right now. I didn't film it on camera because it honestly took too much time because I have to adjust it and I have to wait for a render every time I did some changes. So it actually took a while. But I will take you through all materials I have and I will show you the graphs and I will show you how I uh, was thinking and what I did adjusted. So first of all, these uh, render have basically few materials. Uh, metal, obviously for metallic part. Those are shoulders, those are um, trims, those are ornaments on her. And uh, the second type of material is light materials. Those are the uh, sparkles and flies on the back. This light she holds in her hands is actually both emissive and aerolite. And the small sparkles under her feet is actually also aerolite. So those are lights. The main materials I use on the rest of this render is actually transluent materials. I use a human skin shader in Shot, but I kept my vertex paint, obviously. And I did choose translucency because I want this beautiful effect like one on her hand when light penetrates the skin and gives this very saturated shades. Um, Disney and Pixar like to use it on their characters and I think it looks beautiful, it looks very cartoony and at the same time it looks believable. So I use it almost everywhere, I use it on wings again, I use it on antennas, on the hair, on her face and I keep my poly paint because why wouldn't I and yeah so this is the scheme of um, like my main material category and now let's go and see what's inside of those materials and let's start with your hands so basically let's uh, open the graph this is a um, keyshot material graph that only available if you have a keyshot pro which is uh, highly recommended because now you can adjust materials and you create you can create your own materials. Uh, this is my vertex paint. This is basically a color adjustment. This is what it is, what it says, and this is material itself. So I usually choose those two uh, human skins that are built in by default. Again, keeping my poly paint, and uh, you can actually preview your a poly paint if you want uh, without shader for it you have to click and press C on the keyboard color for color so you can see your shader as it is without like oh sorry you can see your um, uh, vertex paint as it is without actually the shader so this is how uh, my vertex paint my poly paint looks like and then I did some color adjustment. Um, very simple. I, I think I only uh, replace the value. I push the value a little bit higher. And then actually this goes into transparency material. And transparency material here you can see actually the transparency quite intense on this one so uh, light penetrates quite deep 
Uh, and this pinkish color is actually how what's inside. It's co actually color of flesh. I'm sorry, but <laughs> this is how it works. So uh, those two parameters need to to be really uh, high and very bright. So then the light is penetrating. It looks good. One thing I would recommend that working with all kind of skin uh, shaders to go to lighting menu and choose product instead of basic. It will give you more truthful result. Head material is identical to hands material. Uh, same vertex paint and color adjustment and translucency and uh, translucency slider probably a bit higher because I need more intense light penetration but overall it's the same and most of those materials basically have the same qualities like for example this antenna material uh, so again, it will be vertex paint, then shader, and of the only settings that are going to be different is different uh, intensity of light penetration and the color. So those elements, this element, it's supposed to be very light. So there is, it's like feather. There is no blood vessels inside. So this is why I choose very light pink color. So when light will go through and it will scatter, it will give like really nice pinkish glow. One material that I think is very interesting to show you is this wing material. It's not only translucent, it's also uh, semi-transparent. And this is how I did it. So basically the same scheme, vertex color, then color adjustment, then uh, skin shade, and then this gradient is actually plugged into opacity, which allow to light penetrate even more and allow me to see the speckles on the ground with lights on the back shining through uh, the wing. Because now, if I will delay this connection, just delay the keyboard, you will see how this effect will disappear. And it looks more like a frosted glass. So there is something behind it, but you actually they can't see a lot. And this is how my gradient looks inside. So it's black and white, like that. So it's a little bit of black with a lot of light and now you're gonna see how it looks on the model here uh, so the ends of the things is most transparent and uh, the piece behind here is more opaque okay now let's plug it back And now you're gonna see what it's actually doing. Right now it's gonna switch from transluent, from skin shade to this combined material, which I think look very elegant. It give more dragonfly wings quality. So semi-transparent. And it helps light to penetrate more and actually reflect in the wings vein that make this uh, whole render more sophisticated. The last bit now is let's move to the base. So I'm not going to show you all materials for the base, only for the skull. I think it's more interesting. So here I have to get rid of vertex paint. 
If you can remember, my vertex paint of a base is actually just simple gray gradient, which doesn't work all that much with saturation of this render. So I did replace it with simple uh, gradient from beige to dark brownish purple something. So you can see it here. If I press, if I will press C for color, you will see how it looks without shader. Uh, and it's actually mixed between two gradients. So the second gradient look a little bit um, more intense. And it's only for the beak of the skull. Here you can see it. And now you can see it on preview. It's only for the beak, so I want its beak to be extra dark. And here I use a color combine that I use, the, which is actually the node that help you to combine two color textures. It basically works like Photoshop, there is upper layer uh, and layer on the bottom. And you can choose whatever, like I chose multiply, but you can choose overlay and couple of hours. Working exactly like in a Photoshop. Now this is how we look combined. And it plugged to the color. And to the uh, specular and bump, I plugged this noise texture. This noise texture is, uh, could be found by default in this material graph in textures. This is built in key shot. And I added to it an extra noise, like an extra imperfection with skull. This is how it looks like without shader. It just basically like look basically Photoshop noise. And this is uh, settings if you're curious. And yeah, this is again to add some imperfection on the skull because before it was looking a bit uh, plasticky looking because every old skull you can find in a forest gonna look a little bit very gonna have these imperfections like spots like dents this is what i wanted from this material the rest of this base, like leaves, like these branches, like roots, was also made with uh, use of gradient, with translucency, and this is the settings. So again, kind of very simple. And now let's talk about light materials. There is a few light materials in this render. light materials these materials with light ball that she has in her hands is probably the most complicated material so it consists of emissive shader and two maps that plugged into opacity channel this is gradient map black and white and it's combined with curvature map uh, it's gonna take a little bit to render, but curvature map is reacts on a curvature of an object. That actually give me a very, very interesting result on in this shape. Uh, then, uh, by the way, uh, if you right click, you can find all these maps, gradient, curvature, noise, whatever. So yeah, and uh, I combining this material, same as a skull, uh, combining those two maps is a uh, Photoshop thing uh, where I multiply. And it gave me actually very, very nice, very interesting uh, opacity map then plugged into um, emissive. You can see the, with, without, one, without those maps, it looks completely different. Um, I should actually zoom closer for that um, and it actually takes time to render but I'm really happy how it looks like in a final render and it's actually really nice to have this possibility to 
modify your materials like uh, Keshot Pro giving. Otherwise, I would never be able to make such a complicated thing for my render. I like can see if I unplugged it and plugged it back, the difference is really impressive. And on the final render, it looks really realistic, really nice. I actually was surprised by ability of uh, this uh, material graph in Keyshot. Anyway, there is an extra uh, layer to that. This is uh, inside this plasma ball, there is actual ball, which only have simple emissive material like that. There's nothing else here, just emissive material. One thing to briefly point on is that emissive material in Keyshot actually do not emit light and the lighting done with the light setup, which has area light in it, it's a sphere and if I turn it off, you will see like how the light will go off, like that. So it's very important, emissive don't actually do any lighting here. Those sparkles and butterflies on the back is done with emissive again. Uh, emissive and some color via gradient. Very simple. And this some of those sparkles are actually have an area light, so they actually emit the light. Especially ones around those branches, under her feet and inside the skull. Uh, this is how this material looks like. It's very simple and it's super dusk. It's only for what? Uh, because I need very, very subtle light effect on this area. And that's all about light materials. Last but not least, my metal material. So I have a gold on her shoulders and on her trim and ornaments. I made this material simply replacing uh, initial material coming from ZBrush to Anisotropic. I have my polypaint vertex color uh, as usual. Then color adjustment also as usual. And also I added bump, uh, I, add, I add noise into the bump channel and I made it because I need some really worn out gold. Without it, it looks a little bit too shiny, too perfect, like very modern. And I need the effect of, of an aged uh, gold, something like this. So here is bump. And it's very uh, small noise, black and white. You can see it here. And yeah, basically the same story as a skull. And this is pretty much it. I add a little bit of yellowish specular into material itself. So my poly paint is in diffuse channel but this helps a little bit to add this golden shine the specular will add this golden shine on the material and this is it this is all about my material settings and next let's finally take a look on the ready render Ta-da! this is our render ladies and gentlemen I'm pretty happy about it and my next step is going to be post-production. So I'm going to take you into Photoshop. Uh, it's a good rule of thumb. If you work in on your render, don't try to get 100% perfect render from your render system like Keyshot or V-Ray, whatever you're using. Leave something to Photoshop. In my case, I will do some color correction, some levels, uh, some fancy touch up on the lights to make it look a little bit more magical, but it will be in realm of retouch. It's not gonna be in realm of overpainting. So just enhancement of the final image. 
Here is my clone pass from Keyshot. I always render clone pass. And what it is, it's basically a set of masks uh, that you can select in a Photoshop using color selection or magic wand. So you can work on each element separately. Uh, in this case, I gonna use it to uh, separate her from the background. And in some other instances, I will select some elements one by one to retouch them. Levels are almost mandatory. You will see immediately how it brightens and sharpens the image. And here is some more heavy retouching. So, for example, I'm enhancing the light on her hand, making it even more brighter and sharper. I also removing some noise and unwanted elements, uh, making the image more clean and making elements look more on the silhouette. And I will add a little bit of sparkle where the sparkle is missing. And I will add some noise on the skull because I did add a little bit of bump on the material, but I still want the skull look a little bit more dirty, like it's been on the ground for some time. Very last step is adding some glow and some blur on these elements on the background. Like it moving and glowing, basically a little bit of special effects. Final image done. Now I will need some extra renders. And let's go into this too. I don't know about you, but I was always in love with the look of a marble and clay sculptures. There is something classy about it. Simplicity and how it catch light and how it emphasizes the shapes. It's really beautiful. So in my own projects, I always include a couple of black and white renders because I think it helps to present the work even better. 
Black and white setup is also easy to do, so I did it in a couple of settings and I filmed all the process as well. I'm not gonna comment on the process all that much. Here is my light setup here for you on top and my material gonna be rough plastic for most of the parts and my wing material will be built with the same principles as my color render semi-transparent transparency.
Those are my final black and white renders. And I think I won't get myself into much trouble if I would say I even probably prefer them over any colored renders. I just like the look of uh, black and whites. Anyway, we are very close to the end of a third episode. And the very last thing I want to do is uh, to compare my concept art and my final image. Here, yeah, there is some changes and this is often happening in real production. There is a lot of back and forth between concept artist and 3D artist, often supervised by concept artist or art director. And in this case, I was my own concept artist and my own art director. So I will try to explain what changes I did. Uh, the main big change is her costume color. It went from black reformation, renaissance, very sober costume to more light flamboyant uh, with a hint of the 17th century and Sun King costume. And it happened because, well, you can see my concept art is on a, on a very light background, but at the same time she is holding the light. So then I start actually sculpting and start to think about future render. I decided that it would be cool if the light would be in the dark. That means if I would give her very dark clothing, it would be lost in a dark black background. The other thing that has changed is her wings. It became really prominent detail of the design. And actually, it also helped with render, like I have a lot of opportunities to play with render, create this beautiful material and like make a light shine through that. The rest would be pretty much the same. So basically her costume design haven't changed apart from the color. Her headpiece become bigger and more complex. And she got an extra elements, uh, extra ornaments floating uh, around her neck. This is it. And of course, the base. Uh, base was not on the concept art. Uh, so basically decide on its design right in the brush. But this is pretty much it. I think in general, I stayed quite close to initial idea. And I'm actually quite happy with the result. In the conclusion, I just want to say, if you feel brave enough to go to designing your own character, that's great, go for it. And if you feel frustrated in the process, this is okay too. I feel frustrated all the time because the designing characters especially is a very difficult task. It's probably the most difficult task in art, but it's very rewarding. With that, thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, please find me on ZBrush Live. I usually stream once in a month on Sundays. And I will be happy to answer all your questions about this tutorial. My other credentials are here. You can find me on ArtStation. Instagram and I currently trying to resurrect my YouTube channel. So hopefully more video content in the near future. With that, thanks for watching. Have a very great day and hope to see you soon. Bye bye.